Right, uh, we're uh, going to do a short lecture here on Lars Eigner's um, On Dumpster Diving. Um, Eigner um, was a professor, I believe he was a, a, an adjunct professor, uh, like yours truly here, um, uh, in, in the South, I think in Texas. Um, and he, um, you know, he, he occasionally found himself out of work and uh, he really was uh, in and out of uh, being uh, homeless. Um, and he, anyway, he, he writes this piece. It's a, it's a pretty interesting piece. It's usually pretty popular when I teach it. Um, and, you know, there's a few things, I think, going on, uh, you know, uh, sort of running below this, the, the, the surface of this. One is, this is a satirical sort of uh, self-help uh, piece. So, you know, one of the, you know the, the, these, but there's, the, if you go into the bookstore, it's remarkable how, how large these, uh, this section is. You know, we all want to improve ourselves, right? And uh, the, the self-help section, which is all, every Barnes & Noble, or, or and especially those kinds of stores you go into, is a, they, you know, um, uh, they, they always have enormous uh, sections on this. And you get, you know, seven rules on, you know, how to be a millionaire by, you know, 30 or uh they often have numbers on them it seems like these things you know uh, you know uh, there is you know wealth and uh, you know looking good right L losing weight and all these things it's, it's a very um it's an enormous uh that section of the the american book market um and he's uh writing a very and it's, I, he, I think the irony that he's writing he's literally writing about eating out of dumpsters uh but he's writing it as if he's giving you a <clears throat> you know, sort of a how to succeed at it uh, sort of guide, and I do think it, it, it it's it's quite effective as it works that way, and I think you know what what, what do we think of I think you know when we think of um, homeless people right and I, most of us if we come you know, near one we kind of avert our eyes uh, we feel a shame you know both for them and maybe a bit of a guilt for our own. Uh, um, privilege right and um, he's sort of and you know there's a sort of fierce sort of demand otherwise it seems like running uh, through this piece like don't I mean, literally to the and the last lines of the piece are going to be right I feel sorry for them meaning us by the way when he's uh, saying that the rat, rat race millions are all the people between the very wealthy and the the the, the extreme extreme poor um, but anyway, it, it it starts out. You know, we get the etymology of you know where the word dumpster comes from, um, and he quickly he he sort of he gets into a you know I prefer the term scavenger, right? So he's sort of claiming language, claiming a name, uh, uh, picking a name for himself. Not you know the dumpster diver, which is a bit demeaning. He consider, considers himself a scavenger, which is a, a survivor, uh, right? There's a, 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 animals that almost always survive. Um, we then get, uh, the, again, a lot of practical how-tos here, right? Uh, there, for everything from, you know, the things that are okay. Yogurt apparently stays good for, for quite a while. And, um, you know, the, the, the kinds of things to avoid, which would be, you know, any sort of vegetation or something that's that, that's been opened. Um, you, he, you, you learn, you know, and you really do kind of learn a few things about uh, how to survive, you know, this piece might actually be helpful where you to find yourself in such a situation, right? And, you know, the, we, we, we learn about the ways of the streets and the best ways to go about surviving, um, out there, um, and, uh, the, the, the very, there's various stages, right, we learn about, uh, that, uh, scavengers as he puts it uh, go through one is uh, you know just being revolted and disgusted about uh, going into a, a dumpster for for food i think most of us uh, can easily enough relate to that and most of us are right there and none of us uh, very few of us have had this experience we haven't gone any further but uh uh then he said there's there's another stage where you, you know the you, all of a sudden you find a brand new pair of sneakers that fit you or you know a, a radio or you know that maybe you know still works or something like that um, and you realize people really do throw uh, good things, you know, away. Um, and another, you know, uh, main theme of this, he, he is obviously making some uh, commentary, you know, on materialism here. Um, and uh, that maybe, you know, as, as, as the people who are sort of looking at, at, at upon him with such pity, um, maybe ought to, you know, maybe aren't living, the, you know, the best lives themselves. 
And then you do get the next uh, phase of that, right? Which is um, the scavenger, almost, almost all scavengers apparently go through a phase where they get overly attached to particularly any good thing they see. Because it's easy, obviously, to fall into a, a real scarcity sort of mindset out there. Uh, any good thing they see, they um, you know, they start to keep. They start to hoard things. And I, I bet most of us have seen you know uh, these kinds of homeless people run around, right? With like a grocery cart or something, and they've got either you know a bunch of stuffed animals or a bunch of dolls. I mean, things they do not need or whatever it is. Uh, they 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 often seem to they develop uh, these sort of idiosyncratic. Uh, obsessions uh, with with collecting various things, and it does seem to be just this sort of uh, pathological um, warping of uh, I think probably a deep uh, and really primal sort of human drive to to hoard resources because uh, we you know we, we you know if you go back uh, far enough into our ancestry it's you know we all come from. Uh, uh, people who had to deal with very scarce and scant uh, resources and not like it is now. So, and again, you, you take a modern person and put them back into that, they often go into this sort of atavistic mindset, and there they are in this weird um, this sort of culture of uh, uh, remarkable affluence and material production uh, that's often, I mean, the, the, the amount of... Um, for example, um, storage centers that have popped up in the last 30 or 40 years, which means literally people need to have extras because they can't keep all the shit they own um, in their house. They run out of room, right? So we do seem to be just growing this almost like a, a weird sort of cultural fungus, you know, around our... our uh, um, our, our culture and, and at large and in general and uh, that's a kind of a little sort of microcosm of that is what certain I guess uh, uh, scavengers go through where they start to hoard and collect and there, I mean there's a nesting thing going on there right? there's a lot uh, I think of a, a sort of deep psychological things going on there but I think a, even a regular person can maybe it's it's not listen a certain amount of uh, homeless people become homeless because they have, they're struggling with a serious uh, mental illness um, but off, but also I do think he might be making the commentary that uh, any of us put in that situation will start to um, uh, behave perhaps at least a little bit in the behaviorally you know pathological ways and he does say that you know some some never come out of uh, that that phase but um he also some of the other things we get uh, but again he's he's constantly claiming um <clears throat> again almost claiming, don't feel sorry for me uh kind of claim, uh, clawing back his sort of uh his his, uh, his dignity here uh, which is the thing you absolutely lose when you, you become homeless right uh, there's a scavenger ethics he he goes into right um and uh which is he does not uh, go into, for example, residential neighborhoods and go through individual trash bins. That's an invasion of privacy, as he sees it. He won't do that. Um, he's often frustrated by um, uh, winos and addicts who are always, and they can't, especially the ones who, which I guess are most of them, who become can collectors. Um, and uh, collecting cans is a very, very inefficient way to. Um, to, to make money. And basically, they want to collect enough cans to pay enough money to buy a couple of, you know, probably six, anywhere from five to, I'm sure, no more than $10. And that would be a lot of cans, by the way. Um, of, uh, that, that would, what, uh, I think there's still a nickel each. That's a couple hundred cans. That, that's not easy to, to, to collect that many in the day. Um, anyway, a couple of bottles of the cheapest possible wine or whatever to get to get them. So they'll probably stave off the DTs. At this point, you're, um, a lot of those people out in the street, we see the alcoholics anyway, or, or physically dependent not just uh, mentally on, on on the substance uh but they're they're so you said they become so specialized and again this can be something uh can apply to the uh culture at large too that they miss the obvious uh he's found you know they've got they've gone to first of all they're very sloppy about it and they leave a mess which makes it harder again that, that scavenger ethics he, uh, makes it harder on everyone else it's uh, more likely the public is going to complain and then the cops are going to come down on them and things like that uh, when you leave a mess around these dumpsters, and uh, some of them did, and again the winos would do, that. and they would miss actual like money and coins and things when they're looking uh, sometimes for cans. So uh, again, you're seeing uh, the the effect of you know, that life has on a lot of people. Um, there's 
something else I was going to say. Uh, oh, it, but also he sees a... Uh, becomes a bit of a detective almost, right? And, and knowing you know, the best place in college, he's, he's in, I think it's in Austin, uh, colleges are a, a gold mine because young people are on their parents' dime. And again, you know, how do we act when we're not spending our own money? Usually not as, as uh, maybe as efficiently and as responsibly as, as, as responsibly as we should. And young people are very, you know, uh, you know, leave all, especially peanut butter, which stays forever, right? Um, that uh, and, and and things like that that they throw out uh, every at the end of every semester, or he finds all kinds of uh, wine and liquor. You know when the, his parents weekend coming over, uh, we get a lot of uh, interesting things. He also finds everything from you know sex toys to you know and then sad ones too. You know stuffed animals kids have thrown away that you can you know they were obviously very loved these little things uh, once upon a time. wedding albums and diaries and he thought about making a book right that stitched together out of diaries he found in. Um, in, in dumpsters, um, and at the end, you know, it's he and his dog, you know, Elizabeth. Uh, and we get some interesting, fascinating details. You know that the apparently bees will harvest donut glaze. I did not know that until I read this piece. Um, and uh, we sort of uh, come around to the end that he's, he's sort of philosophizing. You know, there, there's two big lessons uh, he's learned uh, being out there scavenging through dumpsters for food. And one um, is that uh, there is no value in material things in the abstract. Uh, uh, sentimental values for things are for, you know, you know at, at the end of the day, really not. Not if you're out there anyway. Um, and that's for, that's for people with, who are privileged enough to uh, live uh, in homes, I guess. Um, and it's, uh, you know, back to the very basic, you know, again, almost primal sort of thing. No, no uh, material things are good for what they can do for you, and, and that is it. Um, and there's no sense in having anything otherwise. Um, and, you know, that's... Uh, you know the transience i think he puts it right of material things and there's another there's a sort of authority almost as this is a, a fairly well written piece this is obviously an educated man um who's writing it right so um which again uh, uh, keeps pointing against type for what we think of when we, we see homeless people in the streets but the transience of material things and that uh, they, uh, they they don't really last and he says he never picks up a thing before without realizing uh the day he's going to eventually discard it um and then you know at the end and then what a trip this was this was really clever um and, you know, that is something i have in common with the very wealthy and uh, he literally aligns himself with the wealthy uh, the very the uber wealthy and then all the rat race millions as he says uh, puts it you're know, rushing towards god knows what in between them um don't understand he has a knowledge only the elites uh, only he and the elites uh, sort of uh, really have and as to the rat race millions which is us right reading this thing uh, in between i feel sorry for them he says and uh, that's you know that's, uh, yeah, I'm pretty you know, really it's kind of come full circle there and again what's a, a pretty interesting piece here Lars Eigner um, on dumpster diving and an interesting commentary on, on, on materialism um, and uh, the way this one man sort of just keeps kind of calling back his own dignity and you know, when he's in the most undignified uh, position imaginable um and just a very clever and ironic sort of uh, uh self uh help uh, uh treaties